So we've had a lot going on with Warzone the last few weeks. We had the mid-season update offering changes to Rebirth Island and the rebirth of the dead event to start, new weapon tuning in just yesterday, the inclusion of Titanium Trials Endurance with increased health via armor plates, a new event with rewards and an air quote secret camo reward of Skynet at 20 wins overall, which by the way, this weekend my squad and I are going for and I'll be live kickstarting streams again over on my Twitch channel if you guys want to come hang out and chat, link in the description below. But between that and all the Modern Warfare 2 stuff and other retrospective content that we've had planned, we haven't really had a whole ton of time to talk about loadouts as we normally do to kickstart weekends. So today I want to return to that a little bit here and give a brief rundown as to what I'd say is a bit of a contention point right now, rifle play in that long range meta for Warzone as it stands. After the update, we ended up seeing a lot of this shaken up, reintroducing some weapons into the fold, knocking some out. So today we're running down that top 10 list that you should be using of that rifle and long range play in Warzone that'll help you excel and do as best as you possibly can. As we go along, drop your thoughts below. Are you liking the current meta? Any weapon you'd add or subtract to this list? Because as always, this is no definitive one to 10 ranking or anything like that. Certain weapons will fit certain engagements better. There's room for weapons to move up and down those power rankings subjectively and depending on the user. That said, if you enjoy the video though, you find it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay the day with all things Warzone, all things Modern Warfare 2, and anything Call of Duty related. The next few months are about to get really busy and really in depth with content. So if you guys would like to stay on top of all of it, I'd love to have you in the community. And finally today and throughout the weekend, my friends at G Fuel have bumped up code Espresso to 30% off your entire order. So if you guys would like to grab a restock, try anything out for the very first time, now is as best a time as any to head on over to the link in the description below and use code Espresso. For me, my recommendations I'd say are the Morbius Nectarine flavor, Pink Drip, Hype Sauce, Strawberry Banana, and Star Fruit. But if at all interested, check the link in the description below. But let's get back to that top 10 rifles of the current meta. So to start out kind of as a sort of baseline and for a few housekeeping items, a few weeks back, we did talk about the rifles. So this is an updated list here compared to what we talked about beforehand because there were a handful of rifles that were adjusted and as a result, the meta shifted quite a bit. Additionally, what we're discussing right now is not for Titanium Trials Endurance. This is instead for your normal modes, your traditional Caldera, your Fortune's Keep, your Rebirth gameplays. When it comes to Titanium Trials, you really want to be focused on damage per magazine, making sure that that's a heavy component in your builds. So things like your LMGs are a solid choice, your higher powered rifles to a degree, like the KGM-40, like we'll touch on here in a second, is also a good choice but when you consider that 400 HP is dependent upon armor versus the standard 300 HP that you have across the other modes, it's a bit of a different ballgame. So for the sake of longevity and the possibility that this could then end up being a listing that lasts longer than the remaining 11 days of the season and across more modes, I want you to keep that in mind. But let's talk about these builds. Firstly, let's start out with the KGM-40. Again, one that does have a place across all of that, but the KGM-40 is a reliable weapon, very easy to control, packs a punch, and of course has kind of become one of the more dominant rifles as as of lately. I'd say this is up there, maybe tied as the top one, top two rifle in the meta play, but for this, I'd recommend the MX Silencer, Rise Dwarf 720 millimeter barrel, the 2.5 times optic, the Krosnik 12V stock, the hand stop, the 60 round 8 millimeter Clouser rounds, lengthened, the polymer grip, tight grip, and fully loaded. Now, still very, very easy to control after the update and is still up there. It hasn't been quite knocked down enough pegs to take it off the meta weapon list is the NZ41 after that, where that, of course, is a build that we've talked about beforehand. We can breeze past this one again. The MX Silencer, where we were 360 millimeter barrel, the 2.5 times optic. I personally still like the EPAC stock, the hand stop, the Sakura 50 round magazine lengthened, the hatch grip for that vertical and horizontal recoil control, as well as some flinch resistance, frenzy, and then fully loaded. Still absolutely very usable. Kind of curious to know when this will be completely knocked out of the meta, how long it will still be there in regards as a top weapon. Outside of that, we have the Nikita AVT, which is still coming in very nicely here. And as a weapon that if you ended up picking up the Terminator bundle with this in it, the blueprint actually sounds hilarious if you ask me. But for this, honestly, it's become a weapon that's pretty solid, nice rate of fire, decent damage per round. But I'd recommend the Mercury Silencer, the Empress 613 millimeter barrel, the 2.5 times optic, the Empress Notch, the hand stop, the Sakura 60 round magazine, lengthened, the polymer or hatch grip, perfectionist and fully loaded. That offering a little bit more control across the board, but also still having that rapid rate of fire and doing enough damage to rip through your enemies. Outside of that one that is again in recent times come back is the Cooper Carbine. Now the Cooper is a pretty solid weapon, I think for if you want like a mid range rifle to its truest degree, you can play this close range, but at long range, you're gonna have some trouble here at this, but medium range, this to me feels like that sweet spot. For this, I'd still recommend the MX Silencer, Cooper Custom Barrel, the 2.5 times 
optic, the 45 RS stock, the hand stop, the 9mm 60 round magazine, lengthened polymer or hatch grip, depending on what you want to get out of it, fleet, and then fully loaded for that build. After that, another build that is still another Vanguard rifle here that is pretty solid, easy to control, but may not pack as much a punch as, say, your KGM or your Nikita or something like that, is the STG 44, but still pretty much all reliable. It's easy to use, easy to pick up, and still you can get kills with it, even if it might be falling down those power rankings ever so slightly. For this, I'd recommend the Mercury Silencer, the 760 millimeter barrel, the 2.5 times optic, the weighted stock, the hand stop, the Gorenko 50 round magazine, or if you want the 60 round magazine, it'll add a little bit more in terms of that recoil, but both are very easy to control, so it comes down to preference if you like having that additional 10 rounds in pocket or not, lengthened, the polymer grip or hatch grip, focus, and fully loaded. Outside of that, we're going to talk about a relatively new one, one that's been popping up after the reloaded update here as a decent mid-range rifle, I'd say, that being the Volkstrom Gewehr. Now, this is interesting. It's been a decent ground weapon in the past, but to take it as your full-on weapon loadout build is maybe something you might not be doing, but it's worth at least trying out. For this, I'd recommend the Recoil Booster, the 428mm barrel, the 2.5 times optic, the Reisdorf adjustable stock, the Strife angled underbarrel. If you want a little bit more control, you can do that hand stop or carver foregrip, the 8mm 60 round magazine, lengthened, the hatch grip, perfectionist, and fully loaded. A decent one that's maybe a curveball here compared to what you're used to, but might be fun to play around with. Outside of that, we're going to jump over to some Cold War weapons, and unfortunately, a lot of these are pretty much built exactly the same. You guys probably could have guessed it. First, we're going to start out with the Vargo 52. Now, Kind of surprising to me, we did not see the Vargo S as the sort of main meta weapon here that we would see after the introduction with Season 4 Reloaded. That's a decent sniper support weapon, but it really isn't anything that stands out head and shoulders above anything else. It's kind of just mid-tier if you'd ask me, which is kind of surprising given that the Vargo 52 that we're talking about is still so good, and adding on five additional attachments, you kind of figured that'd do a little bit more damage. But of course, as with the Vargo, as with the XM4, QBZ, AK-47, as we'll all talk about, about, the GRU Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Spetsnaz Grip, and the 60 Round Magazine, all very predictable here because Cold War weapons, very similar in nature, very similar in build. So jumping over to that next weapon that you could definitely try out is the XM4. That's what I would recommend after that. That I'd end up, of course, recommending the Agency Suppressor, Task Force Barrel, Axial Arms 3x Optic, Field Agent Grip, and the 60 Round Magazine. Now, I have the, as a sort of footnote, the QBZ and the AK-47, because both those are still kind of interchangeable. Really, with the Vargo, the XM4, the QBZ, and AK-47, really comes down to which one you feel the most comfortable with, each slightly having different deviations in their recoil control, in their damage per shot ever so slightly. So, whichever one you feel comfortable, but basically the exact same build across all four of those. As of lately, though, I would absolutely say the Farah has an interesting place in the meta as well as a sort of inside looking out 9 or 10 placement here with it where it's solid, but I'd still choose a bunch of other rifles before that, though it still does have a place, I would say. My own personal build here at this, you may remember it does deviate ever so slightly where it does have the GRU suppressor, Spetsnaz RPK barrel, the Tiger Team spotlight instead of a grip because it's very easy to control as is, the Axial Arms 3x optic, and the Spetsnaz 60 round magazine. Now, if you do take more hit markers than normal on this, don't be surprised. That's why we're at the sort of 9 and 10 placement here, but it is something you could still get away with. And finally, the AS44 is going to be one that rounds out this build here. I quite like the AS44 when you build it out for a practical build, but it is something that does end up taking a decent bit of shots, and the max ammo you can end up having here with it is 60 overall, but with a practical build, I'd say the 50 round magazine. So, you burn through ammo pretty quickly. You're not going to take on too many two, three, or four player gunfights without having to reload. So it is something that can get the job done, but again, you just burn through ammo quite quick. For this, I'd recommend the MX Silencer, 615 millimeter barrel, the 2.5 times optic, the Copeless Guy custom stock, the Carver foregrip, the 50 round magazine, lengthened, the hatch grip, gung ho, and fully loaded. Now, that said, what about your Kilo, your M13, your CR56 AMAX? Where do those fall? Of course, those are still very viable weapons, but to me, I think that what we discussed here, kind of just in terms of overall use, comes in a little bit more clutch whenever you need them to. The Kilo, very easy to control, very easy to manage, but damage per shot is a little bit down by comparison, so you might end up taking one, two, three more shots to secure a kill than these others. The M13 
I don't know if I'm just an M13 hater, but it's something that you have to hit headshots with that to be even remotely decent. If you hit any extremities, if you hit any chest shots, it's still going to be a mid-tier weapon. And then the CR-56 AMAX, I don't know, that might be like my number 11 spot here if I were to give it one. But that said, it's still very usable. And of course, a lot of this can be subjective. Different situations call for different weapons. So let me know your thoughts down below because that's where we're going to wrap it up. Do you like this top 10 listing? Is there anything you'd add, subtract to it? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing running all things Warzone, Modern Warfare 2 upcoming, and of course, anything COD related in the meantime. I'd love to have you in the community if you'd like to stay up to date with all of that. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. Take care. Go use some of these loadouts and hopefully dominate with them, and I'll see you later. Peace.